Ceilings are so dark. Dude. Floors don't make the mark. You're embarrassing us. These are things we need to change. That tune sounds familiar. Ceilings and floors. <sighs> Those would make a happy boy or a girl. All I can do is just offer you my love. Got it. Okay. I was gonna say my Wagner 950 Flexio paint sprayer. Mate? Anyway, when you buy a house, the ceilings and the floors are pretty much one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to take care of just because it takes a lot of space in order to reach them all and to either repair them all, fix them all, paint them all, replace them all uh, before you start moving in a lot of furniture. We knew that we wanted to paint at least most of the ceilings white. The front two bedrooms were already painted white. The front part of the hallway was not yet stained. It was just left raw, whereas the rear hallway was stained dark like the rest of the ceilings. So by painting the ceilings white through the house, it would create a more consistent look and also brighten up the house a lot. However, we did want to leave the ceilings in the study because of the brick floor. Chimney and the fireplace and to study and just wanted to have kind of a different vibe in there. We thought it's going to be a big job, right? So to paint ceilings and then we were new, we were going to be painting the whole inside of the house as well as the whole outside of the house, as well as maybe some furniture as well. So we thought, let's look into getting a paint sprayer. So doing a lot of research, we landed on um, a Wagner model um, that's sold in Bunnings um, and it comes in a kit. So you get um, the main sprayer with the gun as well as uh, a handheld sprayer. The gun has a hose that drops directly into a large bucket so you can get a 40 liter bucket or whatever so you can paint directly from there which makes cleanup a bit easier than washing out kind of a container that's attached to the sprayer. We watched tons of heaps. What? Heaps mate, heaps. Not tons. Heaps. Whatever. Heaps of videos online just to understand you know the different models and what it was like to use them and all that stuff and it was a bit difficult because any any video it seems like that's about a paint sprayer a it's really hard to see what they're doing and then b it's really hard to see the difference in kind of the after effects just because i don't know the video quality and even just trying to photograph wet paint is can be really terrible especially if it's white paint on top of that. And they don't show what it's like wearing the mask, wearing the glasses, being in a closed environment, and what that's actually like. We started with this. It's a Taubman's 3-in-1 um, sealer, primer, and undercoat. So we did two coats with this, and then followed up with two coats of basic kind of sealing white paint. But come to find the knots and the, um, the stain of the sealing were just bleeding through still. Then resetting, doing a bit more research, we came across uh, Zinsler. Zinsler? Zinsler, uh, bin product. It's basically a shellac. So what it does is it seals the whatever you're painting and provides a really nice coating to it, upon which you can do an undercoat, which is their undercoat. It's their whole one, two, three system. Um, which is what we did. So we did one coat of the bin, and then we followed up with a coat of the undercoat, and then two coats of ceiling went on top of that. So all in all, we did four coats of paint on top of the ceiling. Um, it's a wonder you can still see the grooves in the paneling. With the sprayer, I won't be using it again inside. It's just a bit too intense, like from an experience standpoint, with your glasses fogging up and we have three meter high ceiling, so my body was fully extended trying to spray this and see white on white paint and if I was covering the right areas. I will look into using the spray gun for the X side, X, X side of the house, the exterior of the house, as well as using the, the handheld sprayer for some furniture to get a nice showroom finish. So I look forward to trying to do that. Also not to mention with a spray gun, not in our case because we were painting ceilings and it was the first thing we were doing in the house. We didn't need to worry about protecting any surfaces except for windows, which we did tape off the top of the window and tape a drop sheet over top of the windows just in case. Um, but otherwise, we didn't need to worry about taping off. But if you do use a spray gun inside, you're gonna have to tape off every last piece of molding, every last piece of floor, which does take, sorry, heaps of time. 
to do and just adds on to the time of the project. They turned out amazing though. We really love kind of the warm rustic feel that they provide. Um, we intentionally left some of the little nooks and imperfections to kind of keep that kind of rustic authentic look because uh, they are wood panel ceilings and that's a pretty special thing in my book where we are so it kind of fits in. So really happy with how they turned out. Moving on to the floors, um, we knew we wanted a nice kind of timber floor. And flooring, shopping floor flooring, they pretty much come in four different types. So the first type is a hybrid. Hybrid floors are great if you're looking to save some money and also if you're really concerned about water um, because they are a waterproof solution. It's basically a mix of vinyl and laminate in one product. The drawbacks, however, is that each plank does look quite similar, which is great if you're looking for a consistent look, but if you're looking for something that's a bit more authentic to the real thing, um, then you'd want to look elsewhere. Laminate is kind of a step up from that. It has a substrate that's made of MDF, which is basically uh, sawdust and glue packed together very tightly, and then it's capped off with a kind of photographic layer with a really tough clear coat. So they can be very scratch resistant, which is good, but otherwise you're gonna get a, a very consistent look as you may with a hybrid floor. Engineered floors are kind of a step up from that. So they would have kind of a pine substrate. So the bottom of it would be pine, which would be about maybe 12 millimeter. And then you'd have a three millimeter topping of real hardwood to create a really durable plank. Then of course you have a standard hardwood floor, which of course is the most expensive kind of option. Engineered floors come in all species um, that is available kind of in wherever you are in the world. And we were between kind of a black butt, uh, which is a lovely kind of native tree to Australia. And the timber is a nice blonde wood. And if you, you can get select grade, which is a higher grade, which has less of the kind of veins and knots that you might see, whereas we really wanted something a bit more rustic that would show those kind of veins and knots kind of yeah, as a feature. And then we were also looking at spotted gum. Spotted gum is a really lovely timber because unlike black bud, it has a lot more variety um, through the timber. So you might get a plank that's quite dark and looks like a, an American walnut. Um, you might get a plank that is quite light and looks like oak. Um, and then you might get plank with some a bit of um, red hues through it. But most of the timber comes with this nice kind of green undertone, which for the house, we kind of wanted to go with more of a, a green kind of eucalypt look all around. So this really ticked all the boxes in that regard. We wound up going with the Botanic Spotted Gum Engineered Floor from Bowens. We liked it because it was nice and thick. So it had a nice 12 millimeter thick substrate with a three mil thick Topper. It also used the Valinge uh, 5G interlocking system, um, which works without glue. Um, you just need a rubber mallet and probably a buddy of yours to help put it in. Because if you're using a working with a short stick, it can be fine by yourself. But if you're using a pretty long stick um, to to bang in, you'll want some help to kind of hold one end steady while you bang it in. Hit just right, they click in place and provide a nice solid connection. Engineered floors, just like laminate floors, are typically a floating floor, so it's not attached to the subfloor in any way. It's just left to float and then capped off at the edges by a quarter round that's attached to the skirt um, to allow the floor to expand or contract because it is kind of a, a real product. It's not like plastic that never changes shape or size based on its environment, whereas timber in any environment can shift based on the temperature or the degree of humidity. So you want to allow a bit of space for that contraction and, and expansion. There are a lot of different kinds of underlayments that you can use. Uh, we wound up using this product from Dunlop called a timber cushion. Um, so it's not kind of the, the cheapest of the timber cushions or ones from Dunlop, um, but it's a, a good quality one. So it provides a nice moisture barrier, which all of them do, um, but this one provides a bit more cushion and a bit more of an insulating property and makes the floor, makes the room feel kind of nice and quiet and cozy after it's all laid in. Oops. Feels really good. Laying a floor like this goes pretty quickly until you get to a door jam when you need to go around the door jam, but keep most of the board intact. So I used a saw like this to cut off the very bottom of the arc so that the flooring could slide underneath of that. And by taking a jigsaw and kind of using a lot of patience um, and meditation, you can get through this.
In the case of some of the doorways, you can't clip down the flooring in a way because the arc gets in the way. So I went ahead and chopped off the arc at a higher height and then created some plinths to put below so that once the floor was down, the plinth would link with the architrave on the floor and cover up any gap between the flooring and the wall. For cutting any engineered floor, it's important you swap out your blades on your saws. So I swapped out the blade on my table saw and my chop saw, as well as even on the jigsaw for a blade that is good for engineered floor. Typically, they just have a lot more teeth than a standard blade that would come with your kit when you buy it. Typically, in a hallway that we had, you would run the boards down the hallway like a bowling alley, but we wanted to avoid that look. Since the hallway was is a bit narrow, uh, we wanted to make it feel wider by running the boards the opposite direction. So by having a lot of lines going horizontally, it makes the room feel a touch wider. And also looking up to the ceiling, those panels are running in the same way. And also the original floor was running the same way too. So we wanted to kind of keep it all consistent. But that, that created a problem going into the bedrooms because as we created, as we laid down a board that went into the room, we had to link that floor with that one board, which was fine in a couple of the bedrooms because, or most of the bedrooms, because there wasn't much flooring in front of that piece. So we could lay that and then connect it to the board and then move on. Whereas in the master bedroom, it was basically a three and a half by three meter dance floor that we had to lay and then bang into place in order to connect with the one strip of timber that linked in from the hallway, which didn't get a video of that, <laughs> just as good because there was quite a bit of swearing involved. But I guess the only disadvantage with a floor like this is it's hard to lay backwards. So you want to kind of be always laying forwards. Um, it's hard to clip in the material from behind, um, we found. So it would, it's fine if you only have to do a couple pieces or even a couple runs, but if you're, you're trying to lay a whole room like that, it's gonna drive you nuts. After laying the floor, it was just a matter of getting the cord round down around the edges. Um, to cover the gaps. Well, we got most of the house done, so the front two bedrooms, the study, the TV lounge, and the big hallway, um, whereas we left kind of the dining hall because we need to get that part of the house restumped, which will be the subject of my next video, as well as how we linked that space with the rest of the house as there is a step up into the dining hall. So I had to create you know, a couple custom steps out of solid spotted gum to link the two spaces together. That's it for today. Give us a like, comment, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, cheers, bye. Cream, get on top. Cream, don't you stop. Cream, shovel, get up.